And you can see God as assuring and reassuring. So the place of prayer is a place where we can be open, frank, direct, and honest, and we can expect God to assure us and to keep reassuring us. Each day, the disciples sat, ate, and walked with Jesus. They noticed how he practiced prayer like a lifeline. So the disciples asked to be taught how to pray. And Jesus began by saying, when you pray, Um, verse 9 of Genesis um, chapter 9, I mean, chapter 15. And the Lord said to Abraham, Bring me a ephah, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, along with a turtle dove and a young pigeon. So Abraham brought all this to him, split each of them down the middle, and laid the halves opposite each other. The birds, however, he did not cut in half. And the birds of prey descended on the carcasses, but Abraham drove them away. As the sun was setting, Abraham fell into a deep sleep, and suddenly great terror and darkness overwhelmed him. Then the Lord said to Abraham, Know for certain that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not their own, and they will be enslaved and mistreated 400 years. But I will judge the nation they serve as slaves, and afterwards they will depart with many possessions. You, however, will go to your fathers in peace and be buried at a ripe old age. In the fourth generation, that's verse 16, your descendants will return here, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. When the sun has set and darkness had fallen, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch appeared and passed between the halves of the carcasses. On that day, verse 18, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants I have given this land. From the river of Egypt to the great river Euphrates, the land of the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Cadmonites, Hittites, Perizzites, Rephites, Amorites, Canaanites, Gashagites, and Jebusites. This is a long passage, but it's also very interesting. Remember the question the Lord is trying to respond to. He promised Abraham that this land you are in, I've given you and to your descendants forever. And Abraham says, how can I really know this for certain? How can I be sure? Abraham is used to asking questions in the prayer we have looked at. In the first portion, in verse 2, he says, Lord, you say you are my reward. You say you are my shield, but I have no son. God answered that. And then in his answering that, God helped him to develop faith. He showed him the stars and he said, that's it, I've got it. So he would no longer look at Eliza as his heir. Anytime he looked at the stars, he remembered the promise of God, the commitment of God, and he will see in the stars his descendants. And then God moved into the issue of the land. And then God says, look, you are asking me, how can you be sure? Let me show you how you can be sure. And then God told him to get some animals, a heifer, a goat, a ram, each three years old, and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. So he puts a dove there and a pigeon there. And then the animals he caught in the middle. The goat he caught in the middle. The ram he caught in the middle. The ephah he caught in the middle. And you know when you are establishing or cutting a covenant, this is how you cut a covenant. You have these animals all split in the middle. And guess what happens in the middle? There is now a corridor of blood. So when you cut the animals, they you now form a, into two halves. Then you then form a corridor of blood. And then the covenant parties, the two parties who are cutting a covenant, will then go through the halves, through the corridor, the blood corridor. They will form a figure eight. They will go in the, in, in the, in the, in the corridor, and then they will go and keep going in the corridor, one goes this way, the other one goes that way. And as they both go through the corridor of blood, they are declaring the terms of the covenant. They are saying that this happened to me if I violate or break this covenant. 
let me be like these animals that have been cut into two should I break this covenant so the covenant of blood is that serious and so God cuts a covenant because Abraham wants to be sure God then arranges for him to eat, to get the animals and prepare for a covenant which is the strongest most binding uh, arrangement between any two beings and God is saying I'm binding myself to the that to the promise I've given you this is a done deal and so look at this this is really amazing so the animals are caught and then and then a corridor of blood is made and then as the sun was setting Abraham fell into a deep sleep and suddenly great terror and darkness overwhelmed him. We're not going to look into that. But before the bursts of prey descended on the carcasses, verse 11, but Abraham drove them away. God will not drive those um, birds of prey away. But that's Abraham's responsibility. He does that. He drives them away, but he keeps his eyes on the covenant. Now, you look at this. Who are the two parties? that go through the corridor of blood. Verse 17, when the sun had set and darkness had fallen, behold, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch appeared and passed through the halves of the carcasses. Now verse 18 now says, on that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham. I don't know how you read that scripture, but I read it at this, that God caught a covenant with himself and made Abraham the beneficiary. That's my reading of it. Because Abraham didn't go through the corridor, the passage of blood. No. The two beings or two objects that represent what the parties of the covenant are one, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch. Those are the two objects of, that represented the parties to the arrangement. It wasn't Abraham that went through the corridor of blood. So I say that as an arrangement God made. God swore to himself, cut a covenant with himself. Or you could say is a covenant between the word of the Lord and the Lord. A covenant between the word of the Lord and the Lord and Abraham is as a ringside view of the covenant and is the main beneficiary of the covenant and on that day verse 18 the Lord made a covenant with Abraham I read it as God made a covenant with himself with Abraham as the chief beneficiary and what's the benefit of the covenant to your descendants I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great Euphrates and it goes on and that's a powerful covenant so why are we bringing this up? We are looking at Genesis 15 as a prayer, a moment of prayer. And you can see, I don't know how many lessons you are getting there, but quite a number of lessons we can see there. That the word of the Lord is a good place to start praying. It came to Abraham for Daniel, that he went to the word of the Lord in Daniel chapter 9. Number two, we see Abraham as open, frank, direct, honest with God. He's not afraid. He's naked before God. He says it as he says it. He could tell God, you give me no offspring. And he just tells him. And God says, okay, I will address that. And God did address that in that prayer. And you can see God as assuring and reassuring. So the place of prayer is a place where we can be open, frank, direct, and honest. And we can expect God to assure us and to keep reassuring us. Abraham sees, the pray, the, sees his prayer moment as a place where he had to ask questions. He sees, he has his ears open, his eyes open to hear and to see, ready to hear and ready to see. What other lessons am I picking from this? Well, Abraham allows God to rub off on him in the place of prayer. He leaves the place of prayer, believing God and rightly connected. Also, another thing you notice in the place of prayer is that Abraham obeys God even in the place of prayer. Remember, at the beginning, he's praying and God tells him, come out here. He shows him outside. He looks at the stars. Look at the stars. He looks up to look at the stars. So, Abraham tells us, shows us in this moment of prayer, obeying God even in the place of prayer. God takes him out into the open. He follows. 
God shows him the stars, he looks. God tells him to get animals for a covenant ceremony, he obeys. He's attentive. He drives away the birds of prey. He recognizes his path and he does his part. These are the major ingredients in effective prayer. And they fulfill and they are, they, they, they are imbibed. I mean, they are part of what we see in Jeremiah 33. 3. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. What lessons have you learned from this session? And what are you going to do about it? Thanks for watching. What did you hear? More importantly, what will you do with what you've heard? Remember, prayer is not mere activity or ritual, but a license for heaven's interference.